welcome back to a new episode of Woke Nation. Um, it is now December the 5th, so we're heading towards the uh, holidays. And right now, as we speak, Paris is burning. Uh, thousands of yellow vest protesters have had it with Macron's crap and are flooding the streets, rioting, and engaging with some of the police and also the firefighters. Now, some of the police and the firefighters have taken off their helmets to show solidarity with these protesters. Uh, these yellow vest protesters have had it with low wages, high taxes, in income inequality, high health care costs, um, and now the, something to do with the parent Paris Climate Agreement, uh, raising uh, prices on oil and gas, and the idea that Macron, or however you pronounce his name, Macron represents the rich and not the ever-shrinking middle class. But there's even more than just that boiling under the surface here. Europeans, on the whole, are rising up. In the UK, there's total chaos as Brexit threatens to de derail the entire country. Immigration and the cultural changes associated go hand in hand with economic issues in virtually every European nation. In Italy, uh, Matteo Salvino has cut off the immigrants and is fighting to return Italian sovereignty to those who it should belong to, the Italians. Uh, right now, he's going to the mat with the EU over budgeting issues, and Salvino is thumbing his nose at Brussels, as well he should, um, which is refreshing to say the least, obviously. Now, Sweden is shattered, completely broken by the waves of illegal and legal immigrants they've, they've let run unfettered over their country. Uh, gang rape and other violent crime is on the rise. Spain has seen their own rise of nationalism as they've begun to wake up to the horrors that come along with having their identity and cultural heritage erased before their very eyes. Hungary, under the ballsy leadership of Viktor Orban, has made quite a stand against Brussels and the EU. Uh, they build a wall and won't be taking in any more migrants or allowing them to traipse through their country um, pillaging and uh, engaging with the police and just behaving in in a very arrogant manner, which is really stunning to me, the way a lot of these immigrants, you, you would think they would be grateful, but no, there's the supreme arrogance that you see from a lot of them. Um, you see it from the, the migrants down on our uh, southern border right now, demanding that we speed up our asylum process, like they have any right to demand anything from us. Um, but back to Europe, Germany is a total laughing stock. Uh, Angela Merkel is on the way out, humiliated and defeated, almost single-handedly responsible for throwing open the doors of Europe to the whole world, and the world have come stomping in. Things have gotten so bad now in Germany, their situation is so untenable that Merkel and her cronies were even considering making migrants an offer. They may try to offer migrants a whole year's rent, if they return home to, to their home countries. You can't make this stuff up. Merkel throws Europe wide open and says, come in, the water's warm. She starts this chain reaction of chaos and unrest across all of Europe, and now, now that she's realized how foolish all of this has been, and the migrants have come in the millions, she thinks she can bribe them to return home? The lady is insane, and I, I'm telling you, I want whatever she's smoking. Um, but it's Paris that fascinates me. The French citizens have really been pushed hard by Macron and Brussels over the past several years. They've taken in many, many millions and hundreds of thousands and probably millions of migrants. They've done all they could to do their part in aiding this so-called human, human, humanitarian crisis. Uh, France has been hit hardest by terrorism, like with Charlie Hebdo. Uh, multiple shootings that uh, I forget the uh, the exact date of them, but there was that uh, there shootings that happened all over Paris, where over a hundred people were shot, one at us, and people were huddled in the stadium. Um, there's been bombings, machete attacks, rapes, um, all sorts of horror. The horror goes on and on; it never seems to end there. And yet the French people stood strong, but now with these yellow 
best protesters, they've reached a breaking point. Now, over here in America, I think our political establishment needs to take a good hard look at Paris, at France, at these yellow vest protesters, and really think hard about where they think they're trying to take us. I see the same boiling frustration simmering under the surface here in America as well. With us, it's being primed in large part by our elected officials' corruption. There's nothing more angering, frustrating, and enraging than watching our government become so large, so intrusive, that they don't care or fear us anymore. It's been often said, government should fear the people. The people should never fear their government. Do you know that right now in America, our government tries to guilt trip us when we challenge them? They try and tell us we are unpatriotic or irrational or lunatics when we don't trust their narratives or their lies or their bullcrap. They'll lie brazenly to our face and then tell us we're the ones with the problem, with the trust issue, uh, and the problem lies in it with us. There's something wrong with us when, when we challenge their corruption and their lies and, and call it what it is. We're unpatriotic. How frustrating it must be uh, is it for American citizens when we vote for these snakes who swear they'll work for us, who swear they'll fight the corruption, who swear they won't become just another cog in this demonic machine, yet once in Washington they do exactly that. They join the demonic machine. How frustrating is it for voters? Uh, remember, voting is the cornerstone of the American Republic. Remember that? Voting? How can we even trust voting anymore? How, after that crap storm in Broward County, the harvesting ballots the Democrats pulled all over the country to win many elections after the election was over. And that's been a latest thing out in the news here lately is uh, this whole, uh, it's been uncovered, the, uh, the harvesting ballots. It's, it's how they, uh, the Democrats, after the election was over, still won almost every county in, uh, or every seat in the Orange County area, that, that entire area where the, uh, the actual conservative movement was born, um, they won all of it. I mean, there's not a speck of red left on the map. And it was through harvesting ballots. Um, now in Broward County, I'm telling you, there will be a point uh, where Paris and the Yellow Vest protests will start exploding on our streets. And it will be because of places like Broward County. Um, and they, like I said, they will, if places like Broward County are not taken to task, brought to real justice, I'm not talking about the justice of social media outrage that's gone in five days. I'm talking genuine legal consequences, real consequences, genuine consequences, the kind that end in prison sentences and, you know, People's, the rest of their lives being spent in prison for, for, um, defraud, for frauding the American people, for betraying our entire system of uh, checks and balances. Um, the list could go on and on and on. Um, but as I was saying, um, with Broward County, first you have to look at the epic slap in American victims' faces. That is the aftermath of the Parkland shooting. And this, again, is in Broward County. It's it's shocking and amazing to me how Broward County seems to be the home of, I mean, it, it's where all this outrageous voter fraud was going on. But at the same time, it was also the home of the Parkland shooting. I really do wonder what it is about that place that just makes people nuts. Um, but you have to look at the epic slap in American victims' faces that is the aftermath of the Parkland shooting. And I'm not talking about David Hogg or any of the others. I'm talking about the outrageous criminal, criminal negligence, cowardice, and wicked self-importance of the Broward County uh, Police Department. Sheriff Israel, who leads it, should be stripped of his titles for his horrid handling of the entire situation. He did not care one whit that children were being murdered. Uh, his deputy, Scott Peterson, hid. He hid. While children were being massacred, Officer Scott Peterson hid. Other officers stood down and did nothing as well. They created a perimeter, which is useless. So basically, all they did was create a safe space for this, for the guy to, for the kid to shoot um, his victims.
That's all they did. There, there's your liberal safe space right there. That's what it does. It creates a safe space for murder to take place and massacres. Um, and now, uh, so yeah, these officers all stood down. And now, now officer, former officer now, Scott Peterson is filing lawsuits of sorts against these survivors' families, claiming he fears for his life because of things they've said. Uh, and there was a court case where um, I guess he was going to testify about what actually happened on that day and how he, Scott Peterson went and hid during the shooting while the shooting was taking place. And he uh, he had his lawyers contact the court and say that he did not want uh, or he wouldn't testify or he didn't want to if the uh, some of the victim's family were in the courtroom with him. And this had to do with some of the things they said on social media about him. I think one of the fathers, I can't remember his name, um, had said that the only thing that he would give Scott Peterson was a noose so he could hang himself. But, I mean, you can fully understand this is a man that, who was sworn to protect innocent people. And at a time when he most, when he was most called to action, when, when he should have thrown himself into the fray without a second thought, to protect these obviously innocent children who are being massacred, he hid like a coward. And we're supposed to feel sorry for him because the families are angry at him. Now, maybe some of the things they've said have gone over the line, but I really hope the judge tosses that in the tr in the trash can where it belongs, his, his suit or whatever it is. I don't know the jargon. Um, but that, that's absolutely insane that he, he should be able to file anything. He should stand and face them and feel the deepest sense of shame for what he did in hiding. Um, we, we have too much of that today. People today do not want to take responsibility for their actions. When they do stuff like this, instead of having the balls to admit that, they, that he was a coward and that he hid, um, we have such a, a sense of entitlement in this country and uh, such a sense of privilege in ourselves, this misplaced idea that we can do no wrong, that even when we do do wrong, there's a reason for it. Oh, this happened, or oh, that happened, or, you know, anything to, to hide yourself from the truth that what you did was absolutely wrong. Uh, some of it's this moral relativism bullcrap that's just completely blanketed and smothered the country where it's kind of undermined the idea that there is a, a basic uh, right and wrong. Um, so that plays a part in it as well. But just like this guy, Scott Peterson, um, he he should have no alternative but to face these this family, uh, all the families, and, and admit I was a coward and I should never wear a badge ever again as long as I live. Um, he should face, I, I think he should face criminal charges. I think he should be in prison. And it's the fact that he's not, that is, that is feeding the fire in this country, the, uh, the fire of mistrust and, uh, and rage that is building against the government. And I'm telling you, as long as things like these are happening, as long as, uh, stuff like, uh, the way Parkland was, and now, right now, um, now, right now. But right now, there's a, a Parkland uh, school is actually, uh, I think, hired like some kind of PR lady who uh, is actually now t br using pretty brutal, harsh la language against the uh, the victims' families as they speak out against the Parkland um, uh, school district. And it's there. There's now evidence coming out that the school district had known very well, known very well about this this shooter, this kid. Um, they, they had proof that he had threatened many times uh, to kill people, and they did absolutely nothing about it. They covered it over. They buried it. They didn't want to deal with it. They didn't want to acknowledge it. They just pushed it aside. Uh, they knew the kid was going to do what he did, and they did absolutely nothing about it. And so they hired this PR lady. Um, her, her Twitter handle is, I think, Newsies52 or something. I can't remember her name. But, I mean, she's she's a bowl of crap. You know, she's a worthless human being uh, because she's spending her time and, and dedicating herself to criticizing and judging uh, victims who are who are rightly outraged against the uh, the uh, school system and against people like Scott Peterson and that that 
moron, uh, Sheriff Israel, who ironically, or, and un it should be totally unsurprising that he was, he was all tied up and um, tangled up in that, in the voter fraud that went on in Broward County with Brenda Snipes. Um, that was the, you know, after Park Lynn, I kind of lost the thread of what was going on there with him. And I thought maybe the justice had been served and the guy had been stripped of his titles and was living, you know, in a cardboard box somewhere in the ghetto. But no, he, he's still sheriff and uh, he, he had some kind of hand in in uh, finding these ballots and, and transporting them and keeping uh, congressmen like Matt Gatz away from the trucks containing the ballots. Um, so the guy's about as rank in corruption as you can possibly get. I mean, a swift, a swift kick in the balls and throwing him, you know, out on his butt is about all he deserves. You know, he's presided over a police department that is rife with cowards, obviously, who let children die. Uh, he made excuses for it rather than condemning them. Um, Scott Peterson quit rather than was fired, so he resigned. Uh, all the things that should have happened didn't, and be so you, when you see stuff like that, you you can, you have to acknowledge the reality that the the rioting and genuine uh, anger and violence in the streets cannot be far behind when our government fails to act in a particular. I mean, the the only constitutional role that the government has is to protect the people and to uphold justice. And when they don't do those two basic things, and and people that are part of the government obviously are committing crimes and, and are fraudulent uh, and they get away with it and they're covered up and their, their sins are covered over and excused. And then we're told there's a problem with us. You know, that's, that's where these, like in Paris, that's where these yellow vest protesters come from. It's, it wasn't just the, uh, Paris Climate Agreement or, or you know, whatever. That wasn't what drove them out into the streets to burn everything down in Paris in the rich areas. Um, that was the straw that broke the camel's back. That was it. But there was a lot more behind that. The, the immigration, you know, watching their culture rapidly deteriorate and vanish before their eyes um, and being told that they're racist and bigots for not for not agreeing with it, for having a problem with it. Um, so, but yeah, back to Broward County and, and the voting. Um, Broward County's voting record is another kick in the gut. Uh, only a place as foul as Broward County, only a place guarded by that weak-kneed coward Sheriff Israel, only a, such a place could produce Brenda Snipes. Now, Miss Snipes is the middle finger to American citizens, to the middle class, from the Democratic Party with love. Uh, Snipes openly defied judges' orders of transparency. She, um, during the, uh, the the voting process for the during the midterms, she locked the media out of the rooms where they were counting the ballots, which uh, she was told that she had that the media were allowed in there, and she barred them anyway. She barred Republicans from meeting with her or overseeing any of the counting, yet she met privately with Gillum on a number of occasions, and Democrat lawyers were allowed in the counting rooms. Um, on multiple occasions, she refused to answer media questions. Her entire operation was in violation of the Florida State Constitution. Um, I believe more than one judge uh, ruled that way during the recount, and the Florida State Attorney General said the same thing. Yet she patently refused to cave to the law or constitution um, or a judge's orders. It was not until the state attorney general got involved that she grudgingly carried out the final recount, which confirmed DeSantis and Scott as the winners, uh, which we knew from election night. Uh, now, Brenda, Brenda Snipes sat in defiance of her laws, constitution, and Democrat voting system. Uh, ballots just magically appeared every day. Boxes of them just magically appeared. Uh, provisional ballots. And if they couldn't determine uh, what the ballot 
uh, who they were trying to vote for, then they wrote it in. And you know darn well they weren't writing in Republican names. That's how the the um, the margin of victory for Scott and DeSantis just continually shrank until the attorney general got involved. And once she did, then all that crap stopped. And then they just went ahead with the recount and it was over. But had they not gotten involved, had Matt Gaetz not gone down there, had there not been such intense focus from President Trump and the conservative media, um, some people like uh, journalist Laura Loomer was down there um, doing her part in exposing what was going on. Had it not been for all of that, um, they would have continued to find boxes and boxes and boxes of provisional ballots until enough Democrat votes had been found to win the election. It's what they tried to do in Georgia with Stacey Abrams. Um, there's a, it's madness. It really is. It's how they took over Orange County and the surrounding areas, you know, that were the heart of the conservative movement. Well, no more. Um, it, as I was saying, boxes and boxes of these provisional ballots. Uh, trucks were just transporting ballots um, and 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 they were barring people, including Congressman uh, Matt Gatz, from coming anywhere near the trucks. You know, this is insanity. Now we hear from this new form of uh, about this new form of Democrat uh, strategy for gathering more votes uh, called ballot harvesting, you know, which I, I didn't hear about until maybe a week ago, a week ago um, where they go door to door and I guess just take ballots from people who have who aren't able to who don't mail them in in time or. I, I'm not sure exactly how it works, but I've heard from multiple sources that the process is, is wide open for corruption and fraud. Um, and, and I think it's intentionally that way. It's an idea that's intentionally manipulated. It's a process that's intentionally set up that way to allow um, non-citizens to vote. That's the ultimate goal here. Um, you know, at, at a certain point, Gillum and uh, uh, Nelson were, were in court during the recount uh, trying to challenge a judge's order that um, that non -citi a non-citizen's uh, ballot should not be counted. They were trying to force the judge to, to rule that uh, illegal immigrants should be allowed to vote there in Florida. I mean, that's their goal. And they know the Ill illegals will vote for them because – they're doing everything they can to erase our borders, so why wouldn't they vote for them? Um, it's it's the only way Democrats get uh, elected at all is by illegal immigrants and uh, and by pandering to people that are perfectly willing to 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 play to the image of these victim groups um, and and ident and to play play to the image that's painted with. Um, identity politics, and so, and and to stay on as they call it the plantation, basically to accept that um, you're part of a group and you shouldn't think outside that group. Um, your group has been uh, attributed to it, um, victim status, and that and that's a kind of currency now. Um, so the the more of a victim you are, the 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 more important your voice is, and, um, and and that's something that we're taught today to strive for by the Democrats. You know, uh, they have a whole pyramid of it. At the very top would be the transgender movement. You know, you can't get more victimized than they are. Uh, underneath that would probably be black people, and then women, and then homosexuals and um, Latinos. You know, um, I'm sure people would disagree on the exact order, but that's the general idea. And, you know, they try to separate people into these groups and each group is supposed to think a certain way and act a certain way and vote a certain way. And that's the whole point. And they pander to the groups so that they, you know, and get, and and pretend to give them certain um, uh I don't know what you would call it. Well, I mean, free handouts, honestly. The, our whole welfare system is built to to keep minorities um, sucking at the teat of Uncle Sam. And Democrats uh, are the, the largest proponents of that. 
because if you can keep minorities um, desperate and needing the government, then and they and they, and they're pushing constantly for this welfare system, well, you've just bought yourself uh, millions of votes right there. Um, the welfare system needs to be crushed. I mean, it is destroying minority uh, minorities in this country. Um, black people and Hispanic people are being destroyed by the welfare system, which is teaching them not to stand up and fend for themselves and, and, and to better themselves, but rather that uh, mediocrity is a virtue and that groupthink and laziness and uh, victimhood is something to aspire to, and it's it's wreaking havoc on uh, minority communities. Um, but at the end of the day, my question is: when you look at stuff like Broward County, how is it that any uh, any American can really have faith in our voting system? You can't forget 2000 either. We're Gore and Bush. We're going at it in, I believe, Broward County, Florida again. Um, and you see uh, the harvesting of ballots in California. You see what was going on in Georgia and Arizona. Uh, this is a national problem. Um, there's so much at stake now these days uh, in the in the grab for power between the left and the right. Um that it, that it really it makes me doubt whether whether our elections anymore are, are truly truly uh, democratic like they should be whether they're genuine. Um, for a long time before Trump became president, I was convinced that elections didn't mean anything, and then he got elected and kind of um, gave me a different perspective on things. But you know, you see what happens in Broward County. You see the way that in Broward County the uh, with the Parkland shooting the way the victims families are are treated uh, by the school system and by the media um, and by the PR uh, group that they've hired there which paints them as crazies and loonies and um, as the bad guys in this whole thing um, I mean when this kind of stuff happens it's it's this kind of stuff that in the end, if it, if it goes on unchecked, will result in rioting and looting and people taking to the streets in revolution. Uh, and that may be where all this is leading. I don't know. But when I see unchecked uh, corruption and our justice system just being totally manipulated by those in power and destroyed... And used as a weapon by people like uh, Mueller against political enemies, creating crimes just because somebody's on a different political, in a different different political party than they are, like Trump. Um, it really does uh, make you question whether um, there is any saving of uh, the, the republic and the democracy. Um, only time will tell. But if things do continue um, as they are, and people like Mueller and Broward County and um, Brenda Snipes and all these others, you know, people like that continue on um, without receiving justice, then you can bet you can bet that uh, the kind of stuff that you're seeing in Florida or excuse me in Paris with the yellow vest uh, protesters, we're going to start seeing that stuff here. And it'll be sooner rather than later, the way things are going. Um, but anyway, that's all for tonight. Uh, this is Woke Nation. Uh, you can subscribe on iTunes, Podbean, or, or my YouTube channel. Um, like and follow the Woke Nation Facebook page. Any comments, insults, or abuse, you can email to me at roadnottaken004 at juno, J-U-N-O, dot com. All right, until next time, good night, and God be with you.